welcome back. This video serves to inform you on the differences between net area and total area regarding the definite integral. Simply put, if you're asked to find the net area from A to B of some function, you're computing the definite integral from A to B of that function, and that will give you the difference between the positive area and the negative area. Check out this graph with the region between the curve and the x-axis shaded. The area under the x-axis is considered a quote negative region and the area above the x-axis is considered a quote positive region. If these two regions have areas of 3 and 1 respectively and the region below the x-axis has an area of 7 and all of these are in units squared because we haven't specified them, then the definite integral from a to b of f of x with respect to x is equal to 3 plus 1 minus 7. And so 3 plus 1 is 4 minus 7 will give us negative 3. And that will give us the net area. The net area represents the difference between the positive and negative areas. Now, in regard to total area, Total area means that we'll just need to mark any regions below the x-axis as positive before we integrate. So on a more technical level, if we're looking for the total area, so I'm gonna just mark that with total A, this is equal to the definite integral from A to B of the absolute value of our function with respect to x. And this is because the absolute value function makes all negative areas or negative portions of the curve positive. Now, the idea is straightforward, but we need to be careful because we can't integrate an absolute value function straight up. This is because the absolute value function is a piecewise function, and so we'll need to split the integral up accordingly in order to achieve the result. Now, let's take another look at the graph. If we observe the absolute value of this function, we see that all regions or all portions of this curve are now at or above the x-axis. If we were to mark c1 and c2 as the zeros, we can rewrite our integral in the following way. And this will be by using the additive interval property of integrals, which I reviewed a few videos ago. So the definite integral from a to b of the absolute value of f of x with respect to x can be rewritten as the definite integral from a to c1 of f of x. So this will represent the area from a to c1. And this is above the x-axis, so we have no worries there. Next, we will add the definite integral from c1 to c2 so the area that we believe to be under the x-axis, but we're gonna perform the absolute value on f of x in the integrand so that we can make that region positive. And then next, we'll go ahead and add that on to the definite integral from c2 to b of f of x dx. And since this region is also positive, we won't need to make any amplifications or modifications to this. Now, since the region from C1 to C2 on f of x is all negative, we can replace the definite integral from C1 to C2 of the absolute value of f of x with simply the definite integral from C1 to C2 of negative f of x, which will make our integral the total area and not the net area. Just like so, taking away this absolute value here, and then tacking on a negative right in front. And again, I'm noting that we just made the negative area between C1 and C2 positive by tacking on a negative symbol for that region's area, making our area now the definite integral from A to B of the absolute value of f of x is equal to the definite integral from A to C1 of f of x, which is that positive region which we didn't have to modify, plus the definite integral from c1 to c2 of negative f of x. And remember with our uh, properties of integrals, if we have a constant times a function when we're integrating, we can go ahead and make that that constant multiplied by the integral. So we can make this minus definite integral from c1 to c2 of f of x dx plus 
the definite integral from c2 to b of f of x with respect to x. And now all we got to do is tack on our, our computations from earlier. We saw that that first region from a to c1, well, that was 3. Next, we're going to be subtracting the area that we got or the definite integral from c1 to c2. We observed that it would be negative 7. But now that we've made it negative, we tack on the negative, it is now going to be minus negative 7. And that will make it positive, so 3 plus 7. And that last region, that had an area of 1 unit squared. So we can go ahead and tack on 1, giving us now the total area as 11 square units, just like that. And that's the difference between net area and total area. So make sure to watch your example videos so you can build your confidence and continue the process of mastering calculus. Until then, keep up the great work.